paragraph says the level of nuclear risk has increased. There is a danger that misunderstanding, miscalculation or mistakes could lead to the use of nuclear weapons. How utterly, utterly depressing. It, it seems that, uh, as others have said, the world is almost out of control now and we are not um, uh, taking into account just how powerful these weapons are because they are weapons of terror and their use is the greatest crime against humanity. And the supposed justification for nuclear weapons is the doctrine of mutually assured destruction. One day, I hope, foreign policy based on mass murder and the inevitable extinction of humanity will be viewed as the most barbaric and depraved idea ever conceived. So it would be wonderful today to hear from the minister, to hear from the government, the unequivocal statement, which can be found on page 27 in this report, that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. And I think anything less than that is actually dangerous and delusional. As others have said, we live in dangerous times globally. We have a president in the White House who is sat on Twitter, engaged in a sort of toilet diplomacy of a sort that can escalate tensions and move global markets in an instant. While all the while, his military attaché is just a few metres away with nuclear codes that could be used by mistake, by miscalculation, whatever. Um, we've also heard candidates for elections actually start to brag, to boast about how they would be the first to push the nuclear button and start a nuclear war by, by actually starting, launching a first strike. And then, of course, there's the unequal way that the West treats emerging nuclear powers, casting a blind eye to nuclear weapons of Israel India and Pakistan while taking a hardline stance against Iran and North Korea. And all the while, the non-nuclear countries who signed up to the non-proliferation treaty must be feeling cheated that nuclear countries aren't holding their, up their end of the bargain to progressively disband our nuclear arsenal. In, instead, we're renewing trident and expanding nuclear arsenals. The UK government must deploy its full diplomatic force in this area, treating nuclear disarmament as one of our top priorities on the, on the international stage. The Select Committee's report sets out a credible roadmap with which the government could take forward this idea and should adopt in full. In particular, the Foreign Secretary should take a leadership role in this area and represent the UK in international negotiations on nuclear disarmament. And as a nuclear power, we should actually be clearer about our doctrine, ending the strategic ambiguity in favour of a no-first-strike policy and encouraging that as the global norm. No serious contender for public office, let alone the Prime Minister, should try to make a political point out of their willingness to initiate a nuclear war and murder of millions of innocent civilians. We must strive towards a nuclear-free world where the capability to kill every human being on Earth in a matter of moments is consigned to the dystopian nightmares where they belong.